Hi guys, Ev Zervardakis with Holistic Healing Astrology. And today, King Charles III uh, had his coronation and uh, there's just so much hype out there, but there's a lot that's missing. So what I decided to do is a Zoom video recording and we will share the screen right now so you could see the chart because it's absolutely phenomenal. Now, if you don't believe that uh, this date was selected by an astrologer, let's take a closer look. Definitely, there was an astrologer in the works, okay? So I hope you could at least see, let's just look at the birth chart. First of all, the birth chart is in the inner wheel, okay? So let's take a look at that a little bigger. And he's got two intercepted signs in his fourth house, which is here, has to do with his home life and his roots and ancestry. Very interesting. And, you know, it's in Scorpio, a lot of secrets, a lot of interesting, you know, uh, losses and big time shared resources and even the occult. Um, just a lot of, you know, dirty stuff, uh, clandestine things. Look at the monarchy. I mean, you know, there's a lot going on, that Scorpio energy. And he's not only got the sun uh, conjunct Chiron, which is who he is, but he's had a lot of um, suffering, pains and scars right here because they're so close together and on a very deep psychological level here it is right here all right he also has um which is scorpio this is intercepted so sometimes all the astrologers um are not on the same page with this but from what i understand it's not the main focus of the chart uh on the the fourth house because it's not on the cusp on his cusp is libra like peace and harmony but damn behind the scenes, you know, intercepted here was a lot of junk going on, a lot of Scorpio stuff, okay? That makes a lot of sense. Um, and one of his lessons, his karmic lesson, was to let go of this, you know, vindictive side of his personality, if he had it. I don't know him that well. But at the age of 74, now that he's king, um, and she, he sure was a patient guy, but look, Here's the patience in his chart. And he was very practical. Um, he had a lot of responsibilities and duties when it came to his value and his worth. But delay, delay after delay after delay. I mean, he waited a long time. God bless him for his patience. But then we have up here um, another intercepted sign because if one sign is intercepted in the fourth house, the opposite house, the 10th house, has to have an intercepted sign, which is Taurus. Well, if you remember, we had a solar and a lunar eclipse, okay, in Taurus, four degrees, okay? So I think it's fascinating, and they had to do with his moon. So he's pretty much, you know, on a lunar return, pretty much, okay, um, off by four degrees, but that counts. So his north node, uh, was on a return so we'll talk about that but he was destined to follow his mother mother moon taurus his mother was a taurus okay so that's his destiny and it's to you know it has to do with land and possessions and building and you know we're talking about the united kingdom okay but we're going to talk about kingdom there it is leo on the ascendant with pluto OK, so a lot of transformation here, a lot of endings and beginnings in his life. How many times was was he reinvented because he couldn't just become king? You know, isn't this fascinating, guys? Isn't this fascinating? So we're not here to discuss his chart, but he also has Neptune next to Venus. All right. So Neptune is like chaotic. It's uh, nebulous, it's 
uh, cloudy. It's, um, you know, uh, in the fog. Okay. So he didn't always see clearly with his love interests. Okay. And, um, you know, it was almost like fantasy stuff with that balanced type of harmonious love that he was looking for. And you notice it's in the fourth house. So everything had to be arranged by uh, the home, the home life, the family, you know? So, and, and this was the justice, the, you know, the balancing over here. So now, um, so his greatest joy, success and prosperity is Aquarius. And he was always into, you know, humanitarian stuff. This fits. And, and you know, his partnerships were a little strange. I mean, um, Camilla, you know, she did not fit the mold uh, that the monarchy wanted him to um, go after and find a certain type of a woman, had to be a virgin, had to have royal blood. Um, she was already married, you know, so there was a lot going on, but it was true love for him, but he didn't even care. You know, he's like, I don't care. That was important to him, but everything kind of worked out uh, right now, you know, so he was born um, to be the king here and leadership. I bet you he's going to be a great leader because of the Aries. He's going to do a lot of reformation. He will reform. He will do new things. Um, and peace, harmony, and balance was all about um, the roots of who he is. You know what I mean? So let's go here. And he also has Uranus and Gemini, 29 degrees um, in his 11th house which has to do with humanitarian efforts. So he was very verbal and vocal, communicated a lot about humanity. Uh, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius over here, which is, you know, the one-on-one -on -one relationships. So um, that's interesting too. So he had a lot of contacts and he did a lot of uh, work with, the um the world and there was this urgency to save the planet etc cetera, etc cetera. he was very vocal about it okay now let's throw in uh the time of the coronation and i'm gonna uh set it back a few hours because right now it's looking at uh the time uh oh let's go here 11 a.m well, that's the, let's see now. Let's make sure we have the right date. Yep. So we're going to go back to 11 a.m. When it started. And so if you see here, uh, the first thing you see is that the nodes, okay? Okay. So he has a nodal return, you know, that means that's his purpose. So he is going to reach his purpose and look at the whole thing was televised. That's Mercury, Mercury, and then Jupiter, extravagant, huge, big. Okay. And this is his social status. There it is. The sun in Taurus unexpected, um, original, unique, all right? It was because they didn't show this, but there was revolt and uh, people protesting um, while the coronation was going on, which is very interesting. They didn't show that on TV, but it was a mixed bag. There was a, a lot of division there. So um, also this North Node is you know, hitting on his moon, which is a conjunction in his natal chart. And it's also square um, transiting Pluto right here and his descendant. 
you know, with one-on-one -on -one other people. So it's very powerful stuff over here. Okay. So he worked real hard for this. He waited a long time for it, but it's super big. And then if we look down here, of course, the south node is conjunct because they go together. It's always a, a cross. But then look, the moon is conjunct his Chiron in the fourth house next to his natal um, sun, natal sun and Chiron. So there was a healing today. You know, all those years that he was patiently waiting, it happened today. So I am positive that very good astrologers took a look at this. And, um, you know, you could see that the nodes are very important for big time events. And these events last for six months. But, you know, um, it's it's a beginning here. And we could go into looking at his um, solar arc chart, you know, and um, I could pull that up and just take a peek. But I don't think we need to do that, actually. It's just so much has happened. Um, and there's so many connections here. And even his midheaven, uh, which is career and status, and the south node, there um, it's hitting his nodal axis and the moon. So I'm sure it was a very emotional uh, time, but uh, and a lot of feelings were involved because you have the dynamics of the family. All this is family, and you got one son that kind of, you know, stirs the pot. And then you have the other son who's very obedient and um, supportive. And, you know, every move that that family makes, they're under a microscope. Everybody's watching everything. So listen, guys, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you have, you know, <laughs> you could have a lot of problems. And the monarchy is a great example of the huge problems that they have, but they have to put on that uh, pomp and pageantry that some of us enjoy looking at and some of us despise it, but it is what it is. And um, until it changes, um, it's a historic historic event, all right? Um, and a lot of the dignitaries were there, a lot of movie stars were there, uh, who's who was there. And again, like I said, there were crowds of people that supported it and there were crowds of people that protested it. And that is the Uranus so close to his son, but it didn't stop the show. And that's why security was super intense. You have to have really intense security in this day and age, um, you know, so, and it, cause it's outdoors. And, you know, people were doing things to the guards' horses. I saw some video clips. It's like, really, guys? You know, uh, it's like you don't touch the horses. They're on duty, too. <laughs> you know, they're not pets. But it is humanity, and I always enjoy observing humanity. But I feel that this monarchy um, is a, definitely going to be different. And I feel that. Charles is going to make some huge changes for the world because of Pluto and Aquarius. Uh, I bet you my bottom dollar on that. Um, and intuitively, my psychic impression is, my mediumship, mediumship impression is that I'm not sure how long his reign is going to be. And I'm I'm sure that he's feeling the same thing too, because this urgency, you know, with uh, love, value, in communication, conjunct to uh, Uranus in his 11th house. These are organizations and humanitarian efforts, hopes and wishes. You know, he is 74. Let's hope that he, he lasts um, as long as his mother did. Um, but everything's lined up 
for the son to take over. Um, but um, they may have a young king coming on board if um, Charles, you know, doesn't last as long as the mom. I'm sorry, it's kind of morbid, but yeah, I went down that road. I shouldn't have done that. However, it's all in God's hands. And again, the church and the state are unified in England. I said that on my TikTok. Well, what does that mean? That means that the king is the head of the church, the Anglican church in England. And if you notice that they got a lot of Christian relics from, excuse me, different parts of the world for this ceremony. They used, they made the uh, anointing oil, which is like an unction. Um, and it's the whole service was done um, during the coronation because inside the coronation service, there were many other little sub uh, services, the Eucharist, all that. It was like uh, going to uh, several masses in one event, okay? So the other thing is they got the oil from Jerusalem, all right? And um, and then it came from, I think, the um, Archbishop of Jerusalem. He, uh, he sanctified it, you know, said prayers and things like that. Um, and then I believe the olives from, were from the Mount of uh, Olives um, in, in that area. So the other interesting note that you have to understand and remember is that Prince Philip and Charles would go to the Greek monasteries, <clears throat> excuse me, in Mount Athos um, for uh, like spiritual retreats and they would do their confessions and stuff like that. So they are very spiritual um, beings, all of the monarchy. And I know uh, Queen Elizabeth was very spiritual. Um, she always did her prayers. I mean, cause she was the head of the church. You know, it's always, it's almost like, you know, she was like a, a mini Pope type of thing. You know, she was the head of the church. So she had to do the best that she could to uh, up, uphold these values because uh, what I understand about religion, um, priests and the higher up they go in status, the more, uh, the higher degree of judgment that comes upon them. They're judged at a higher degree, all right, different level because they lead the flock, all right? So this is the story about King Charles and long live the king. Uh, and let's see what happens. But I think it's fascinating to see that the North and South nodes were involved with his coronation and transiting Pluto and, you know, Uranus, the sun, Mercury, you know, Mercury is all about communication. The whole thing was televised. The whole world knew about it. Um, and of course the whole world knowing about it, that's, you know, Pluto in Aquarius. So it was a ma major transformation of the world. So I hope you enjoyed this. And, um, and if you like to be notified, go ahead and click on that bell, go ahead and subscribe. Um, so you will get upcoming, um, videos. And if you haven't checked out our brand new and improved website, please do so. And uh, if you want to get on our um, newsletter subscription, go ahead and do so. The other project I have is to upload all the old blogs that I had on my other website and put them on the new website. And I'm going to just divide them into two into spiritual and astrological. They'll be cut in half because I talk a lot about 
uh, the spiritual world, how to connect with your spirit guides, all the, you know, the two areas that I focus on when I do coaching and uh, astrological consultation. Okay. And I teach too. So it's all ball, all rolled up into one ball. Um, so yes, uh, new improvements. So yes, you could buy now and pay later. You know, I had to get into the swing of things because with this economy, people don't have the money anymore. We all have bills to pay, uh, but things are getting more and more expensive. So instead of complaining about it, we just, you know, buy now and pay later. So um, it's not such a big hit. So I hope you enjoyed everything. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Have a great night.